So let's turn this now into a MATLAB command. So let's just MATLAB or Octave. So let's just quickly draw again our lengthy transfer function here. Just to have it on the sheet here. So again, this is this this we um, this one we can now interpret as an FIR coefficient. Essentially, say this is here this coefficient multiplied by z to zero. Yeah, so without any delay. So this becomes an FIR coefficient soon. So and then e to S infinity co complex conjugate T Z two minus one. So this becomes becomes an IIR coefficient. For Z two minus one. Yeah, so remember in the data flow diagram. And so this here essentially gives us gives us one filter command. And then then the same here is for the second part S infinity divided by S infinity star minus S infinity. So this again gives us an FIR coefficient. for z to zero, so the first one in the MATLAB convention, and then one minus and then e to s infinity t z to minus one. So this gives us here again our IIR coefficient. Co Wait, or oh, this one here essentially, so I shouldn't have drawn the curly bracket so far. So that's our IIR coefficient here. And so these and these and this here together forms us the second second filter command. Okay, so we need to discuss a bit more the um, IIR filter command filter coefficients in octave and MATLAB. So before we we go into the MATLAB documentation, let's just quickly recap how um, our filter how our filter coefficients actually work, or how they where they end up essentially. So imagine we have our generic first order filter here with with this pole. Then the question is here. So how is this? How is this exactly applied? to the filter or to the data flow diagram. And so and the trick was the following. Remember so that we have the h of z and we multiply this with our x of z to get our output here. And so our y of z then becomes here our x of z and then this here multiplied with 1 over 1 minus e to b t z to minus 1. And so what we did with that was 
then just multiplying this here out so that we have y of z and then multiply this minus y of z and then e to bt z to minus 1 equals x of z. Yeah, so, so this was, and then what we need to do is the next step here. So we need to have the y of z is then equals x of z plus y of z e to bt z minus 1. So now I just rewrite this here a bit so that we have x of z plus e to bt and then z to minus 1 and then y of z. So we know that so this gives us our our recursive recursive filter. So that's our t, that's our delay. And then we have a summation at the input here. And and we feed this delayed output back in here. And so now the so that's our x of n and our output is somewhere here. So that's our y of n. And so now the question is about about the sign of this feedback here. And so we see here that this one here gives us a positive sign in the feedback pathway here. So we multiply this here by e to bt, this pathway here. So this means that from the original transfer function here, so if you have some something like 1 minus e bt here as a coefficient, that this negative sign turns into a positive sign here. So that's important to see so that this sign is inverted when we're translating this into this into this pathway here. So let's draw an exclamation mark here and that we take this into account that we have a sign inversion. So the so the thing is, so MATLAB is or Octave is taking care of the sign inversion. So we're putting the coefficients in there as they are, and not as they are in, in the circuit diagram. So let's um, define our parameters again. So frequency of our resonator is 0.1. Q factor is 10. And we just from now on set T to 1, and we just and I won't type it in there. So normalized frequencies. Okay, so now we just need to define our S again. And um, I just prepared this here because that's quite cumbersome typing. So now we need to create a delta pulse for our impulse response. And so we create a 1 and then loads of zeros, 1, 100 and close the bracket here. So with that we should have a vector starting with one and then quite a lot of zeros to have the filter relaxed to that. And so so after we have created that we can just now create our impulse invariance impulse response here or impulse invariance created created filter coefficients and put them into the filter command here. So let's move this move this down here. So this is our FRR coefficient here and this is our IRR coefficient. So I start here with the first filter. So the first the first filter is these are the FRR, that's just one FRR coefficient, so I can just write it straight in. So that's the conjugate of s and then divided by conjugate of s minus s. So this concludes essentially this factor here. 
So now we need to take care of the IIR coefficients here. And these, and there are two of them. So this was the first and the first and the second one here. And so the first one, so we need, I need to create a vector here. So that's the one and then minus exp of conjugate of s and remember we set t to 1 so there's not more to add to this here so with this we've got our IRR coefficients and now I just sent our delta part in the system so let's see if y reacts to this so we're getting an output here we cannot plot this because these are complex values so we need to wait a bit until we've generated the also the y2 command here. And y2 is obviously quite similar to y1. So the only difference is that we don't have a complex conjugate factor here and also no complex conjugate factor here. So therefore the only thing what we need to change is here remove the conjugate here. And then we do the same the same also here that we're getting rid of the conjugate here. So it's essentially just just S, but the bracket we still need the bracket here. Okay, so now we should have also in Y2 something. Okay, so that that looks good. And so now as a last step, what we need to do is we just need to subtract these two filter responses from each other each other so our final filter response is then y1 minus y2 and um, so let's see if this gives us the desired result so we see the values are now real again and so the complex con the complex values cancel out so now we can we can plot this and, um, and this is then here our impulse response created by the impulse invariance method.